Proteins are made up of amino acids. There are about 20 different types of amino acid, but they all have the same basic structure, which you need to know about. They have this central carbon atom here. Uh, they have an amino group on one side, NH2, and they have a carboxylic acid group. That's where they get the name amino acid from. Um, that is the same on all amino acids. What is different is that R group at the top. The R group can be uh, all sorts of different variations, which give us the different 20 amino acids as shown here. Amino acids are all what we call amphoteric, which means that they can react both as an acid and a base. The sequence and combination of different amino acids affects the 3D structure of the final protein, uh, as the varied R groups can interact and form various bonds with each other when the protein is folded up. Just like glycosidic and ester bonds, you can also form bonds using a condensation reaction to join two amino acids together. These are called peptide bonds um, in proteins. So if you take two amino acids and perform a condensation reaction on them, uh, then you will make a dipeptide, which we made, uh, which will have a peptide bond and water will be released because it's a condensation reaction. Now, if you continue to do that, a lot of times you will form a polypeptide. So lots of condensation reactions will join lots of amino acids together and we end up falling at forming a polypeptide chain. Now this is where proteins become interesting because that, sim that simple chain of amino acids is what we call the primary structure of the protein. But what can then happen is it can start to fold up into highly complex shapes. First it will go into what we call the secondary level of uh, protein structure, which is where it will either form an alpha helix or something called a beta pleated sheet. Um, then it will start to form into more of a 3D shape and certain uh, bonds will start to form between the different alpha helices and beta pleated sheets, things like hydrogen bonds, disulfide bonds, ionic bonds, and it will start to develop this 3D shape. Some proteins then have more than one of these sort of subunits join together to give it what we call the quaternary structure. So protein structure can be um, thought of as this ever increasing level of complexity from primary uh, through to quaternary structure. Let's look at some of the different bonds that form between molecules in a protein. So hydrogen bonds are quite weak bonds. They are formed between slightly positive charges on hydrogen atoms and tiny negative charges on oxygen atoms. Disulfide bonds um, are covalent bonds, they are, are very strong uh, and they are formed between two cysteine amino acids usually because that's where the sulfur atoms are. Um, and ionic bonds, also known as salt bridges, are formed between positive and negative amino acid side chains. So these are some of the bonds that you will expect to see uh, in a protein. These bonds are very sensitive to changes in temperature and pH. Um, if the temperature gets too high or the pH um, maybe too acidic or too basic, then it can cause these bonds to break. And if the bonds break, um, then the protein becomes what we call denatured and it will probably stop being able to perform its function. So there's a few examples of proteins that you should know about. The first one we're going to look at is haemoglobin. Now haemoglobin is an example of a globular protein. It has four polypeptide chains uh, joined by disulfide bonds. And this means that it's an example of protein which has quaternary structure. Each chain is arranged around a heme group which contains an iron molecule. And it's that iron molecule, Fe2 plus iron, that can bind with the oxygen, pick up the oxygen, which is the main function of haemoglobin in our red blood cells. Collagen is an example of a fibrous protein. Uh, fibrous proteins have little tertiary structure. Uh, they are made up of long parallel polypeptide chains joined by cross links to form fibers. And this gives collagen its function, which is an extremely strong fibrous material, which can be used, is found in um, tissues like bones and ligaments and tendons and uh, in your skin. Collagen is actually a triple helix. It's made up of three alpha chains and these are held together by hydrogen bonds. And these form things called fibrils, and then these are joined together to form collagen fibers. So you can build up this uh, really, really strong rope-like uh, fibrous structure out of this protein. So it's very different from the globular protein example of hemoglobin.
Keratin is another example of a fibrous structural protein, a bit like collagen. It forms the main structural components of your hair um, and feathers on birds, hooves, claws, horns, and it's also found in our skin and in our nails. Again, it's made up of many sort of long uh, fibers, um, coils, and these are joined uh, with disulfide bonds between cysteines, which give it this really high strength.